Hello, folks, and welcome to another production of the Single Eight Show Half Hour Power Hour. Your name is. My name is Michael Davis. Your name is. Kind of mills, y'all. And today, on the Single Eight Half Hour Power Hour, we took a break last week, but we're going to get back to it. We're supposed to talk about only murders in the building. Only murders in the building, and we have. We're supposed to do two episodes, and I really want to start with the first episode that was done very hidden camera documentary style. Oh, I fucking loved it. That was amazing, wasn't it? Yes. I'm like, my little little neurodivergent brain loved it so much. I'm like, yes, give me these angles. (laughs) Give me the character not knowing that they're being filmed. Yes. And they played it really well with cameras they knew they had, cameras that they didn't know that they had, the 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 multi-angle recording and splicing in the different angles from the different recordings that they found. And they had a really good camera filter for the for the hidden security cameras. That's true. And the film recording that the twins were doing, sisters, that that imagery was amazing. And them having to go, okay, and then you can kind of, like, looking back through it, I'm like, they did really good hiding the fish out to the camera from from the characters holding them to the actual cameraman holding them. Yeah. And I feel like they did really good with con- for for the people who are filming for containing for when the twins were filming, keeping them at the same height and like keeping, yeah, keeping it, it at their like at their angle. Yeah. Like the cin- the cinematography of this was amazing. I hope that that episode is put up for an Emmy because for the cin- cinematography alone. It should be cuz man and how they kind of and I loved how they kind of framed it too yeah. with them in mind with the flashbacks happening uh, I'm like yes and even in flashbacks I'm like you I can I can see you looking like college students yeah that's really true and how that they even how they played that that some of it was the professor's camera recording them and yes. then it shifts over to them recording. It was really cool. And I'm yes. really hoping because he wasn't on there enough. I really liked the actor that played the professor. Yeah. He was on this TV show uh, GAPD and I watched called This Is Us. And he is a really great actor. I'm kind of deep down hoping that it turns out that he's not really dead. That oh, yeah. he covered up his death. Because I want to see more of that actor. Well, you can always do flashbacks. There's always room for flashbacks. There's always room for flashbacks. That's in true. a murder mystery. <laughs> Very true. Very true. I am uh, realizing that from watching The Penguin. There's yeah. always room for flashbacks. Hey. Yeah. Flashbacks are fun when they're not overused. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, flashbacks can get overused so easily sometimes that I'm like, whenever I try to write stuff, I try to write stuff with as little flashbacks as humanly possible. Yeah. That's all I want. Or if, I, if the whole story is a flashback, I will literally write the beginning and the end first and then write. Well, yeah, there you go, and that Good. way, that way, you know how all these middle things and prequel stuff fit into the overall story. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I get that a lot. Yeah. So I, I've really loved this. So, what do you want to pull out of this episode? Because it really, 
when the last time we talked about only murders in the oh, Philippines. Oh, head up spoilers. We forgot that. It's spoiler time. Spoilers, um, yeah. For for um editing YouTube dad put 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 find a red spoiler sign with black lettering and put it right here in the YouTube version. I I'm not really good about fixing things in the middle of YouTube. <laughs> They're just going to have to listen to the song. Spoiler time! Spoilers! Yeah. Yeah. Good man, that would be fun. And so the last episode, last time we talked about it, I was convinced it was the twins. It was the brother-sisters. Whenever they point it out, I'm like, it's not them. <laughs> yeah. Whenever to highly point it out, it, I know it's not them. <laughs> yeah. I am almost convinced... Now, d- deal with this, because I so direly want to see this actor again. Yeah. I want him to be associated with the murder somehow. Oh. And and his body joints or whatever being in the fire. Yeah. Uh, as a deploy, a decoy. Yeah. Yeah. That works. Yeah. Because I just, I really want this actor to be on the show some more than just one episode. And it, and like, only murdered in the building is so good. Because I feel like, because now, because I think the main cast from the beginning were also producers of it. Yeah. I feel like this season, they let had fun with their characters now because now they know people like them. Yeah. And now they kind of more than season two decided to rock the boat with them a little bit more. Well they're able to to be more playful with their characters especially with the other actors that are playing them in the movie. Yes. Yeah. I feel like everyone is like having fun this season. Yeah. Like, especially the episode that we're talking about. It felt well, like... Well, this a, episode was really good. It felt like everyone was having fun during this episode. Yeah, so now, help me piece this together. Was this the episode that Steve Martin kept having dreams about, um, about, um, Jane Lynch? About Sue? Um, I think that was... That was before. Yeah, I we think that was... We about that. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. That was with Ant-Man. Yeah. It was just really... And now... And now they've even pulled it so far away that it's not even Jan. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's smart. It's like not reusing people in the same role yeah. again. And I felt like Jan very much came up naturally. Because they could have easily forced it. That did not feel forced to me at all. Yeah. That felt very natural. And I wanted... Hopefully there's a natural way to see her back. Well, and hopefully that natural way to see her back is some redemption... Or in flashback. She was definitely... So she definitely killed that one kid in their investigation group. But but there is another murderer that's trying to track them down. And has been visible since season one. Yes. Yeah. Now I think it's very fun for like season three to do a loop full. Like she... Like Fender Thing did with five. Yeah. It like... That did the person who was constantly working in the background, taking notes. Because I feel like the season were also kind of playing with exactly who is Mabel, who Uh is Foley Charles, who is Foley Oliver. Yeah. And I feel like we're also, like, ripping them at characters apart through the killer point of view. Well, that's true. Because you do have this outside angle now that came off of a lot of the hidden cameras that the killer put in the in the rooms. Yes. Because so that whole episode 
part of those, even though it was the brother sister, she to say the killer didn't have access to them yeah. and couldn't see through them, as we see, spoiler alert, in the episode. So now I'm looping back a little bit to this writer, the writer that has the fake hair and the fake beard. Yeah. Because we're starting to look at somebody that has that has had free access to these rooms. Yeah. It's somebody that's been able to get into the rooms. So it's either somebody that knows about all of the secret passages. Yeah. Or it's somebody that's a part of the film production team. That that also been in the building since season one. Yeah. So it's oh had, yeah, it's been since season one, so it can't be any of the film production team at all. Yeah. It's got a what if it's the dog guy? The dog guy. The, the guy, the pet guy. The guy who wants to do the pet podcast. Oh no. Why can why, why would it not be him? Him actively he seemed he too into helping them. Yeah. In a specific way that it can't really be him. Cause I would also be mad if that character was a kid. We call it, well, the, but why, I, the, the, why wouldn't it work out that he's so active in helping them because he's so hot, active in helping them because he needs to be in the loop to know that he's not caught. Yeah, but he was also in the loop last season. And he's been in the loop the season before that and the yeah. season before that. So yeah. he's had access to all these rooms. But it can also be technically anyone in the building across from our main where where Mabel is. Because technically all of those guys have been in the building since season one. We just haven't seen them. Okay. Another person has had some kind of relationship since season one yeah. that we haven't seen yet this season. Yeah. What about that African-American guy that fell in love with Mabel? Oh, maybe. Because he but, would have the audio-video experience that would have been required in getting but that, this equipment out. That would have to be from season three. Yeah, but that from last season. He also works for the character that Tina Fey played, right? The other podcast person. Didn't he work for her? She's been on the show since season one. Yeah. Which would have... All right, he may not have physically been there, but he would have still had the connection through Tina Fey. Yeah. Just also, an idea. where have Tina Fey been this season? I want to see her. I'm, uh, I'm... That's fair. I want Tina Fey back. <laughs> Tina Fey's too busy doing... Uh, mean Girls. Uh, five... Five... Four... Five... Air, four... Five ever... Girls Five Ever? Girl, girls Five Ever. But she thought to Mean Girls um, London. Is she in the Mean Girls production no. in London? No, but but she did fly over to hell. Okay, well, she wrote that, too. Yeah. Dude, mean Girls was made by Tina Fey. Yeah, and and the musical one. So she, so she could have been over there while they were filming this. Yeah, and so couldn't be able to show up. Fair enough. Over in London. Yeah. Yeah. So, they, it, there's just so many things. But with just the way... But they definitely maybe might have cleared up this brothers sisters. Oh, they're cleared up. Yeah. They're, they are no... They are cleared up. There's no F and or bucked about it. They're cleared up. Yeah. So now we Good. now that we're trying to figure out who's doing all this, we gotta we gotta jump into the next episode. Yes. More spoilers, yeah. Yes. More spoilers. Spoilers come in. Alright, so can we jump all the way to the end? Yeah. Uh, of of last week's episode. It's revealed. That everybody in that other building, the west side, 
had some connection to the character, the professor, the college professor. Of Dudenhoff. Of Dudenhoff. One of them actually took classes from him. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that it was Dudenhoff that no. worked out all of these low-rent apartments, right? Yeah, but for the couple episodes again, it said. Yeah, Dudenhoff. Dudenhoff. But said, I will rent all these apartments and you can rent them from me for a cheaper price. And all of them have been trying to keep his identity alive because they've been receiving checks that belong to him and cashing them for their community. Yeah. All of that was revealed at the end of the last episode. Yeah. So uh, we have we have something that has all of them benefiting from Dudenhoff dying. Yes. So what do you think about all that? I think that was like a very smart angle to take. Yeah. For that. And it would fun seeing Kingo again. Even if it didn't last, um, in a, um, in not as big of the capacity. Yeah. The episode. Is that the Christmas guy? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so now all of them have a motive of killing Dudenhoff. Yeah. And we're assuming that. Jane Lynch knew about that too. So probably, they, cause that problem, that white room would probably hurt. Yeah. So now that puts a motive on them killing her and Dudenoff because they didn't want her to get the news out, and now they're profits profiting off of Dudenoff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope it's Richard Karn. Yeah. The guy with the eye patch. Oh, yeah. I hope he's the one. They're kind of hitting it a little bit. Because he has a direct not, connection, too. Yeah, and it's not as loudly as the, the brother said, dude. Yeah. Because they were hitting at them very loudly for the first half of the season. And speaking of hitting things really loudly, we forgot one of our commercials between the episodes. If you like a loud Halloween, then you're going to be very disappointed. Because we know that spooky means a place of silent remembrance. And we at Rolling Green's Coffin Cemetery, on this Halloween season, will give you a quiet place to remember your loved ones while that you play some rounds of midnight golf at Rolling Green's Golf and Cemetery. That's right, we'll light the headstones and we'll give you glow-in-the-dark golf balls as you stroll through the nighttime lanes, playing your favorite game and remembering the loved ones you shared it with. At Rolling Green's Golf and Cemetery, make the place you got your hole in one your place for your hole for one Rolling Greens. And come down to Hatchet Field and drink some of our blue coffee down at Beanie's and sing to your jet for join us before you do. And don't forget to get your wiggly down in Toy Zone for the $49.95. And, and don't forget Join us and uh, yeah. And speaking of forty nine ninety five, yeah, we gotta ask one person a question. Hey, old man Mills, yeah. what about forty nine ninety five? That reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back no. to the show. Hey, for me that reasonable. I love myself some good stuff, man. Okay. And sorry, when you said light up the tombstone, my brain didn't think of, like, the traits around. I thought literally a candle on the tune. Sure. It could be that way. I don't know why my brain did that. I'm like, oh, they they don't want to clean that up after Halloween. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. All that wax and whatnot. Yeah. That's fair. No little spotlights. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. All right, back to the show. So, there's. I really hope it's Richard Kind because he seems to have a little bit of control over everybody over there too. Yeah, he seemed to be like the one with the moat control. Yeah. Eye patch. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really intriguing, but they're they they, they just I feel like they gave out a major clue, but again. As we know from it's this still show, not as loud a clues as the brother sisters. Yeah, because they made the clues loud even before that episode. Yeah, and this could play out as they're just scavengers that got lucky, and it became profitable to try to keep that death a secret. And they may not have known that Jay Lynch knew. So there's yeah. this, there's so much that's still in in play for all this. Yeah, and probably Jan probably told Sue. Yeah. yeah. After when she was in prison, and she probably actually helped Sue figuring out that people that somebody else were was after them in the building. So did she reveal to them about the West Side then? Who, who really brought up the West Side? Was it the pr- projectory of the bullet that killed Sue? Or, or did it somebody... It was the projectory of the bullet. Okay. Whose room was the empty room that they think it was shot from? That from Dudenhoff's room. That was Dudenhoff's room? Yep. Okay. It's very minimalistic. Yeah, because and... he probably wasn't in there. And there's a pig. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't Mabel live over there now? Yeah. So she's like in with them. But not knowing what they're doing with it. Well, yeah, that's fair. But now they know, the Westsiders know that they know that they're involved in something. Yeah. Because that's how that last episode ended. They know about us now. Yep. They figured it out or something. Yep. From Howard. Yeah. But I still don't think it... I think that they know that they figured it out with the um, the check cashing scam. Yeah, from Howard. Yes. But I don't think that they're saying that they know that there are murders. I, yeah. I, it's really... They play these things really close. It's really cool. They're, they're getting better and better at it for the season. Yeah. And you know that they've been renewed for a season five, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I can't even wait to see how that goes. They get to that keep on having fun with these characters. Yeah. I think now, now they're at five, they're kind of going, we can do whatever we want now. Yeah. Well, they can start to get a little bit more cons- per- absurd. I'm waiting for the Only Murders in the Building cartoon series. Oh, they could do that. <laughs> I would watch that easily. But you know what's missing? And I don't, and we don't count in this. They yeah. should really be making those podcasts. Oh like yeah, Steve Martin and Martin Short and and um, what's her name? Selena Gomez. S- Selena Gomez should really like. They should have been making this podcast. Yeah, and putting them out, doing it like on the side, doing it. That could yeah. be fun. And lacing stuff together from the shows that is the stuff that we watch them record. Yeah. They really should have. That would have been cool. Who knows? Maybe they'll start it. Well, fair enough. If Disney listened to us. Disney listened to us. We got some, we got a money idea. Yeah. Get yeah. them together. Edit some stuff from the shows. Make it a only murders in the building for real podcast. Yeah. Yes. Please. And they could put it out while the actual episodes are coming out too. Yeah. Like they can line it up. That you can either listen to the podcast first and then watch it to get how they got there golly, or do it the other direction. It could work great. Golly gosh, Gene Heck, Disney. Yeah. You, you missed out on some more revenue 
Yeah. Disney's first ever pre-produced podcast show, Only Murders in the Building. Yeah. Oh. They can make money. Disney knows how to... The they, one thing that Disney doesn't need help with is learning how to make money. Now all they need is a little Only Murders area in <laughs> California Adventure. California Adventure? <laughs> that, that Tell would, me not. That no. would be funny. <laughs> that would be quite funny. Or like have something in like the like the California Adventure on Main Street shop. Yeah. I will buy it. Put it in the Disney store. I will buy yeah, Put like, it in World of Disney. I, uh, you will get money from me. You remember those shirts that that guy made and sold that was outside? Their their mega fans that were camped outside. They yeah. should sell those shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Oliver made those. Oliver made. Was that them. Oliver that made those? Yeah, Oliver made the Fred shirts and the T-shirts. Okay. Well. And I want them Dutch it badly. Yeah. <laughs> I want them so accurate. I'm sure if we looked, even if we put minimal effort, we could find those shirts somewhere for sale. I, I know it's on Amazon. I oh, one, really? I let one official license. Yeah, officially licensed means it'll be more quality uh, gear. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. All right. No offense to Amazon, but I'm on my... But now let's get into the goat butter of the doll, shall we? All right, go ahead. We ha- Shivy with there. Who? Shivy from the Gilmore Guild. Suki. Suki. Yeah, Suki was on there. Yeah. And, and one she of played the played Steve Martin's sister, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we did get our return from our wonderful actress from. From uh, L.A. Yeah, that the, was an awesome scene. Yeah, when that when when the actors worked with them, yeah, and to really open some more doors uh, of the mystery, that was really cool. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, sometimes you need to hand it up for because actors literally study behavior. Yeah, and I'm like that. That was a good thing to hand at the point that they were at. I think that was the great point in them um, actually solving the mystery yeah. for the actor to come in and step in for it. And then Cause they were really in like the behavioral part of that mystery. Was that the time that the writer guy fell over and said, "Oh my God, we're making the sequel already"? Yeah. Yeah. But, no, the writer guy wasn't there. That was still... That we already talked about that then. Yeah. Yeah. But it was really cool to see how that they solved all of these mysteries. And, and they were the ones that figured out that Sue knew what was going on. They figured it out. No. Yes. No, Charles did from the beginning. They, they figured out that she knew. Okay. Okay, but I thought that they pointed out that her notes were actually trying to reveal the mystery. Yeah, they point out. The they notes. they figured that out. Yeah. Yes. Okay, then we're both wrong. Yes. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, they figured out the notes, but they figured out that she already knew at the at the hotel at right. the at the apartment. Yeah. And then the actors were able to to Peace. point out that all of these notes was actually trying to reveal about the the murder. Yeah, like they got down to like the behavioral bit of it. Yeah. That I'm like, and like, oh, and them showing up and Mabel going phones, phones. Yeah. And they started having the text that people are still watching. Yes. Yeah. And but, but that but even that doesn't completely point towards the West Siders. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, it would pretty cool seeing how they I felt like every person had like a good light shine upon them the episode. Yeah. It felt very very 
Everyone was spotlighted in some capacity. Everybody was spotlighted in some capacity, but some people ended up looking bad. Yes. Like, the the West Siders look really bad right now. Yes. Yeah. But it's more like, I'm pointing out how good the script was. The script was amazing. For that, because they got everyone, like, their moment in the spotlight. It felt like a moment in a section when everyone got equally shared. Yeah. And it was like, okay, they hit that character mark and they moved that forward a little bit. Yeah. Okay, we have the person coming in who's playing for one session, and we know we have them for at least one session. So let's bring them on that emotional arc. Yeah. And they were able to do that really, really well. Yep. Yeah. It was awesome. It was quite amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And... It's awesome how I urge you to go and watch it and it go watch it again if you already but watch the show it is more than worth it. It's awesome because these people are so creative. Every person that put that show together marketing side through camera to the main cast and the directors. Yep. And it's you, awesome. And you can watch it on Hulu. Hulu or Hulu on Disney Plus. Yeah, so please go and join it. Next week we're going to have some major things to talk about as we pick things back up on uh, Agatha all along. And we will let's start with a massive spoiler warning. We're going to start the podcast with a massive spoiler warning. There will be spoilers and then it will be the opening of the podcast. Yes. That will mean a little editing on your part, but we need to put the spoilers at that point. Because first. the first episode that we will talk about was a quickie. And there is a huge spoiler. Yep, huge one by the end of it. Yes. And well, don't worry, we won't dive into the Funko Pop of it all, but... Yeah, there's a huge spoiler that already exists on the internet from the Funko Pops. But we will, that will be a part of the end of the very, we'll do one more episode after each of the season ends about overall season thought and you will hear my thoughts about that situation yeah there, there's that a are, little bit of anger at uh transcended towers right now yeah that over, are, that, over a huge spoiler that came out from funko but it's not a positive response yeah so but for now that was the single eight half hour power hour your name is my name is michael davis your name is Hunter Mail Jaw. Have a great week.